moving on a little bit, uh, I'd just like to read you two short things. And normally I don't read anything. Remember I said that. But I, I also told you here I'm going to. Um, Max Planck. Because, I mean, it's one thing for Jim Trades to get up here and say matter doesn't exist. I mean, I'm not even a physicist. But Max Planck, whose credentials are unimpeachable, and who ushered in the quantum age, and who discovered Ma Planck's constant, which only a fool would dispute, said this, and I'm going to read it, quote, There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. The other founder, one of, of quantum physics is Werner Heisenberg, who again, there isn't a physicist alive and there's no scientist you can find who is a true scientist that would challenge Heisenberg. He said, he insisted that physical quantities could be considered real only after they had actually been observed. When they were events describable in space-time and given in perception, which matches quantum physics. In other words, things come into physical existence at the moment of observation or measurement. Until then, they exist in all states at once. That's the essence of the wave function. So, if a tree falls in a forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a noise? Well, the answer is, it's not fallen, it's not standing, it's in every state in between, until observed. It's kind of like the game of musical chairs, where you have, say, 15 people in 14 chairs. All right, and the music starts with, everybody sits down. That's kind of the way reality is. When the music is playing, there's no observation or measurement taking place. At the moment, everything takes its place and forms. Again, what governs it? your beliefs, and your expectations.